Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've bitten a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, traders and investors. Welcome to this Tuesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. I'm Spencer Israel here with Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick. On today's show, we are talking about this uh, this GM uh, rumor from over in France. We also are going to discuss the follow-through from that Goldman note yesterday on Apple. We have one or two relevant earnings reports for the day. We also have two guests today. First, we'll be joined at 8.15 by Ross Cameron. He is the owner of Warrior Trading and uh, Fantasy Stock Traders. And then at 8.35, we're going to have Nick Shaheen, as we do every Tuesday. He's the author of Create Income with Option Spreads on MarketFi. Joel, how are we doing in the S&Ps this morning? Uh, we're pretty much flat on this uh, Valentine's Day edition of our show. Uh, down just a tick from that all-time closing high, 26 even, all-time closing high, 26 and a quarter. 27 and a half, that's your high. 29 even. We'll keep up. We'll talk a little bit more spoos when Dennis comes on here in a minute. Crude trading up, still in that trading range. 53.39 is your last print. That's up 47 cents. Still trying to break above 54. Let's take a look at the dailies here. Still in that range. Gold and silver, I'm going to talk to Dennis about that too when he comes on. You got gold up $8.70. And that uh, Silver over that crucial $18 level. Good morning to you, Dennis. What's going on, Joel? What's going on, Spencer? I, I just want to say, have you ever seen the S&Ps make four new all-time highs and four new all-time closing highs four days in a row? Have you ever... I just want to know, what, what was that bet you we won. did? You won. Let's bearish. move on. I already Let's won it. On. Yeah, you won. <laughs> Three lunches. And it's yeah. so hard too short this market you know and that's why i was like when you're making a bearish bet i was like i'll just take the other side of it because it seems like 90 percent of the time or even lately 100 percent of the time when you make a bearish bet on the overall market you're wrong because i mean the stocks just keep going up they find a way even if you get individual weakness in specific sectors other sectors just pick up the slack and we're starting to see new life in the biotechs here the last couple of days i mean it's just continued rotation and money never seems to come out of stocks altogether it just rotates into other sectors and as a trader i hate this actually you know and uh, most you know a lot of people say oh they love this market going straight up you know because if you're just playing the long side it's good i've always liked playing the short side better than the long side so i despise a market that just sits there and climbs you know every single day or finds a reason to go up and you know there's no volatility when the vix is sitting down here kicking around 11 i am like just ah I, I, I want some volatility, Joel. Give me some volatility. Well, first of all, um, I'm gonna half your lunch goes to Rachel Shasha because she was she talked you into that bet because she was <laughs> she was on the line. So I can't remember the bet even. I just remember it was being making a bullish bet on the spy. What was it? Was it was like twenty. Uh, it was you had uh, twenty three twenty nine, and I looked yesterday. It hit uh, it hit twenty three. Uh, 31 I believe you had 2329 and uh, I, I can just tell you what I was looking at it absolutely didn't mean anything at all we had a uh, a quad bottom at like 82 80 to 82 and I'm kept on thinking oh man there's no way that's gonna hold up that's gonna hold up or it was a triple bottom it turned into a quad bottom and oh. so you nailed me I do I do like a half hour into that bet on that day that I was wrong. But uh, <laughs> so uh, Rachel helped you out on that one. And I just want to mention gold and silver, too, because I read something over the weekend and it might have been in Barron's. I'm not sure. But uh, maybe Ed Yardini said that, uh, who's a pretty well respected guy. He said, if you look at gold here, there's two scenarios. One is that, yeah, this economy is going to overheat and there's rampant inflation, so that will be good for gold, right? And then the other scenario is, you know, things completely fall apart in the White House. Uh, kind of happened today a little bit with the resignation. Uh, and then there's going to be a flight to quality. So I don't know. I mean, there's a double double positive scenario for gold there, and it's been uh, gold and silver. And uh, they've both been reacting that way. Dennis, how, how do you feel about that? Maybe adding a little bit more to your portfolio. 
Uh, yeah. I, you know me long term in gold. I think you know it's just more defensive. It gives a little bit of a pop usually when the market's going down. I'm not a believer. I know a lot of people say you should have five to ten percent of your money in gold just as insurance. I don't buy that whatsoever because if my portfolio, you know, if stocks fall fifty percent. Of having my portfolio of 5% of gold is not going to help whatsoever. It's still going to be ugly. So that's why if you like gold, buy gold. But just having to have gold in your portfolio or increasing exposure to gold, I don't think you need it. I think, you know, there's a lot of other ways to play, you know, if you think you're getting bearish. Sure, it's some stocks. You know, you don't need to own gold. So, and I, I, I just don't know the long term, you know, do people still, I don't even see people wearing it anymore. I mean, it's a store of value. You could say it's a currency. It's got some reasons out there, but long term, I'm just not a big fan of gold. I never, never happened though. All right. So let's get to some movers here. And there's a stock that we've both been talking about, about adding long term. And um, I know I have not uh, General Motors, big news out of the uh, Detroit based company. What do you got for us, Spencer? Yeah, this is from Reuters. Uh, GM's uh, Opel and the PSA Group, which is a, a French auto manufacturer, they are in merger talks. Wow. Yeah. And the stock getting a huge lift, but it's already starting to leak. And, you know, you look at this and you think, wow, you know, GM popping and was popping up into the mid 37s on this. And you think, this stock has just been under pressure. There's got to be some people that say, oh, I'll sell a little bit on this room. Because that's some room with the whole company, you know. It's their European operations, which is, you know, it's, it's a big piece. But that being said, to pop the stock 5 6 7% on this this morning, it's up 4 still now. It's at 36.90. But, well, how high did we get, Joel? I, I saw this in the mid-37. 37.40, it looks like. I don't think we got quite over that. 37.40 is your pre-market high. Uh, that's just shy, man. This is an ugly chart. I don't even know if this was after earnings. That's shy of uh, 37.59 at your January 27th high. So let's just call it 37.50 here. Major resistance, but I agree, Dennis. Uh, starting to leak here, so not a great sign. Overhead supply, long term. I still think there's value in Ford and GM. I own Ford. I do not own GM. I like Ford's got a little bit better dividend yield. Ford's getting a little pop on this this morning too. Short term, these stocks are just not loved, and every time they get a pop they seem to find sellers there and it's so important i'm gonna you know and i'm gonna drift in the t-mobile earnings report here in a second because of this but it is so important to understand sentiment when you have news and you go you get gm and ford with some positive news or a rumor on gm there's just so much negative sentiment towards the stock there's going to be portfolio managers come in and say i'm selling it because it's worked it's worked so many times in the past and that's why i don't think gm is going to just pop up to 38 and beyond on this um it's more often that they actually pop and then they drop and let's look at t-mobile just you know for this theory here that i'm talking about and I, i'm kind of you know ticked on myself because i wasn't paying attention when the report came out i was i got sidetracked but i have written on my sheet here for tomorrow so you know i always put ideas for the trading day ahead of time and i had it like i knew t-mobile was going to report it's in big letters and it says sell t-mobile pop on my sheet and I'm looking at it here, TMUS, and it did pop on its earnings report. Why do I want? Did I want to sell the pop? You know, before I even knew what the earnings were, was because obviously the news yesterday with Verizon really knocked down the sector. So all of a sudden, everybody's looking at this, saying, "Uh, you know, they're not loving the news." Uh, yesterday, they hit T-Mobile really hard. Now all of a sudden, on their earnings report, which is obviously their old information. The stock's going to pop up to 62 and a half again. Everybody said, thank you very much. It was only up there for about five minutes, and then it collapsed. Now it's trading down here again. So didn't do what I said to do on my sheet. So always do when you write something down, do it, and make sure you're paying attention. But it was only up there for five minutes. I wasn't paying attention. And I did not get short T-Mobile. I hope somebody else did. Anyways, TMUS trading down here now, 80 cents. I don't even know what the earnings report uh, was there. So, Spencer, give us the details on what T-Mobile had to say. Q4 EPS, 45 cents. That may not compare to the 29-cent estimate, however. Sales, 10.2 billion versus 9.84, so a, a good number on that. They see fiscal year uh, 17 adjusted a bit of 10.4 to $10.8 billion, and uh, that's pretty much all you need to know. So, Dennis, don't look at your daily charts yet. Was that just something that you picked out? This is a nice half number, or did you look at the daily charts? How'd you come up with 62.50? Didn't even look at a chart on it. All, all I came out with was I wanted to sell the T-Mobile pop. And a lot of times you'll see a buck or two if it, the report is decent. The report was decent. But what I'm going to say, I'm going back to my algorithm here. Sentiment is more important than earnings. 
there is a lot of negative sentiment just because of what Verizon did over the weekend here in the telecommunication stocks here. So looking, you know, T-Mobile gets killed yesterday, Sprint gets killed, AT&T gets killed, Verizon gets killed. That gets everybody thinking all of a sudden, you know, if these things get a pop, I'm going to maybe take some profits there. And T-Mobile got beat up the most of all of them. So I know it came back a little bit there yesterday, but that being said, you know, when you get the dollar and a half or two dollar pop, there's probably a lot of overhead supply just because of the you know carnage that it had there yesterday. I mean, stock closed up at 62 and went all the way down to 60. So lots of people probably saying thank you very much. There wasn't a lot of stock that traded there, though. I wish it would have been up there for a little bit longer. Maybe I would have noticed. Maybe we may able to get a short off. But here we are. We're already trading back in the red. Uh, the only reason I mention that is because <laughs> there was a triple top at uh, the 6250 area, not including Monday, but Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Here are your three highs, 262, 242, and 253. Uh, so you could have gotten that. You would have only taken... Uh, ten cents, twenty-two cents worth of heat, Dennis. On that, if you would have gotten at sixty-two fifty. Jumping over here, just to a couple other reports before uh, before we look at some, or before we get our first guest here. Um, just want to talk about where is it? Oh, what's what's the news on PLKI? This is the one that's fallen here, two and a half bucks this morning. It was uh, it was falling there last night too. So this had rumors yesterday that. They were potentially right. going to get a bid from somebody, and it popped all the way to over $75. And now is there rumors or is there news that they're not going to get a bid? Because it's almost given it all back now. Yeah, that they were going to get a bid from <clears throat> excuse me, uh, restaurant brands. And then they responded. This is after the bill. They responded. Uh, said it what did not, they say? The restaurant brands did. They don't comment on market rumors, obviously. Uh, now, this morning, we're seeing that restaurant brands' deal for Popeyes is uh, is not likely. This is from the New York Post. That deal is not likely, uh, though restaurant brands could be in play for other opportunities, not uh, Popeyes. So looking here, PLKI. This is, you know, these rumors, man. Joel, these stocks go nuts on rumors. $65 to $75 on a rumor that it might get a bid. So you, even if you get the bid, you're already you know, you're paying up huge for it. I mean, really, if you think about, you know, often in a merger, there's a 20, 30% premium. Well, you got a 20% pop yesterday just on a rumor. So you're already giving up two-thirds of the potential gain, even if the bid comes in there. People are crazy, man. And now it's all the way back down. So here you are. Whoever bought that 75 needs to listen to the pre-market prep show a little bit more. Because if you're coming in here and buying these stocks on rumors up 20%, you're doing it wrong. You know, I, I would say I'd be selling the rumors up 20%. And, you know, two out of three times, or if one out of three times they don't work out, then, you know, you're probably going to make money with that strategy long term. When the stock pops 20% on a rumor, that's my new rule for myself. When a stock pops 20% on a rumor, I'm going to start selling it short. <laughs> All right. Well, we've never. <laughs> I don't know. And right you know, down, uh, going Dennis, to, you better hear that I'll sell all the wrong ones. You but. better get a. Uh, you better get a little bit. Maybe you have Spencer start writing down your rules for you because uh, not you. I don't follow out, him. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't even. I don't even write, do what he says on my sheet. Sell T-Mobile pop. T-Mobile gets a nice pop. I've been having a great day today. If I would have did that, I don't even do it. Uh, we've never been one like to chase rumors on you know on stocks. I mean, even when we were at Bright, I mean, I just kind of feel like when the information gets to me, it's probably a little bit late, and I mean, not necessarily fade these kind of moves. But if you're being aggressive in something like this, and then you're thinking of taking it home overnight, I mean, you're running the risk of you know no deals. So I mean, and now people that are caught in this one, it's going to have a hard time. Could easily go back to that 65 and a half, 66 area where the uh, rally emanated from before the uh, rumor hit the street. So 814, we're going to take our break. Spencer, who yep, do we got coming on? going to grab Ross Cameron. He's the owner of uh, Warrior Trading. He's a day trading educator, also runs Fantasy Stock Trader. So we'll be right back with Ross Cameron. Whether you're a short-term swing trader or a long-term investor, you need to check out Thinkorswim, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. There's a reason why Thinkorswim has been named the number one trading platform, because it has it all. With Thinkorswim, you can trade stocks, options, futures, forex, and virtually every other type of order. Get notifications on mobile devices and interact with other traders in chat rooms. You can also use technical indicators and see the latest investing and trading education in Think Money magazine. If you want to keep up with the markets, you need Thinkorswim. To experience everything Thinkorswim has to offer, open a TD Ameritrade account today. Thinkorswim, the online trading platform for traders and investors. TD Ameritrade, member SIPC. All investing involves risks.
Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzingo's Pre-Market Prep. I am Spencer Israel, here with Joel Elkanen and Dennis Dick, and we're on the line with Ross Cameron. He runs uh, two sites, Warrior Trading and Fantasy uh, Stock Traders. Real quick, Ross, give us the, uh, the Reader's Digest summary of each of those sites and what they do. Sure. So, um, as you guys know, I own Warrior Trading, and I founded it... Uh, really to create a hub where traders could come, connect, and exchange ideas. And uh, we now have over 3,000 active traders uh, that log into our chat room and are taking our trading courses uh, on a daily basis. Now, one of the things that I decided to do was uh, create a platform where our students could trade in a controlled and safe environment and where I could actually watch them trading. So the Fantasy Stock Traders platform is a real-time trading simulator. It's got real-time level two data, and it allows me to log in and watch each of our students as they're trading. And then it also, of course, archives all of their trades and outputs uh, these reports that show their metrics. So they can understand their profit loss ratios, their accuracy, and basically get a sense of whether or not they're ready to trade live. One of the things I tell students is um, if you can't make money in a simulator, you've got no business trading with a real live money account. And you know that alone would have saved me tens of thousands of dollars if I had used a simulator when I was getting started instead of you know jumping in with real money. And how does one go about signing up for this? I'm just curious. Well, you can either sign up at warriortrading.com, and that's where we have our classes and our chat room, or you can go to fantasystocktraders.com and sign up just for the simulator. All right. want to get your thoughts now on, on, on the market. Uh, you were talking uh, before we brought you on about some recent uh, moves after some reverse splits. Uh, tell us what stocks. You, you, you noticed a pattern, and uh, you mentioned a few stocks, uh, CBIO, uh, KBSF. Tell me about uh, what you're seeing in those stocks right now. Yeah, so one of the things that we're seeing is these stocks, small cap stocks, are doing uh, reverse splits. And then often the day the reverse split uh, goes through or the day after, we start to see these really big moves. And they get really exaggerated, like KBSF going from uh, $3 all the way up to $18. And then what we often see is after that big move, a, a secondary offering. And, you know, that's kind of. Uh, the thing that long-term traders worry about, because if you're holding through that, it's usually not good news. But as a short-term trader, the opportunity to capitalize when a stock goes from three dollars to eighteen dollars, you know, there's a big potential there. So uh, KBSF just did that. Uh, CBIO is a recent reverse split that I've got on watch today. Uh, we've seen this from RGSC, Givo. Uh, is several other stocks. So it's kind of a pattern to look out for. When you see a stock just did a reverse split, it's a small cap price between $3 and $8. You know, there's a good chance that traders are going to keep that on watch. Ross, uh, one of the things that we've been talking about on the show that Joel and Dennis have at least is it's inc an incredibly hard market to, uh, to short and this rally is just relentless. So how do you approach a market like this as a short-term trader? Well, as a short-term trader, you know, for me, it's not a big issue. I mean, yes, the market's strong. Statistically, last year, when the market was up more than 1%, uh, those were days that I lost money, just statistically. I did better when the market was flat or down. So, you know, with that in mind, I'm a little more cautious when we keep seeing these, you know, big green days and, you know, the S&P. But uh, at the same time, almost every single day, there is a stock coming out with some type of news, whether it's, you know, a biotech with you know, clinical trial results or uh, a stock that gets a big contract. And, and so those represent opportunities in that specific name. Trading, you know, an indice or trading commodities might be a little bit more difficult. But I think if you focus in on, you know, the headline specific to one stock, that's the reason that stock is going to move higher. And that's worked really well for me the last few weeks. And I, I guess going a little bit deeper into that, you said you look at headlines. We uh, Dennis has out outlined his uh, his hierarchy of of news the, a few days ago. It, it went oh, what was it? It went it went uh, offering, then sentiment, mm -hmm. then earnings. No, no, no. Offering, sentiment, guidance, earnings. I think the, the, yeah, the algorithm's so long now, Spencer. I forget it. Okay, right. <laughs> I, I think that was but, it. it was but bottom line is the point I was just trying to make. I was even making. It seems like it ma it's like sentiment. 
matters more than the earnings itself. If everybody yeah. hates a stock going into the report, they can blow it away, and it doesn't even matter because everybody just hates the stock. Yeah, that's a hundred. I mean, I agree a hundred percent, and we've definitely been seeing that. Where you know, a stock will have really good fundamental news, and it goes down. So, you know, for me as a short-term trader, and this is something I remind my students of, you have to focus on the, te for me, the technicals. You know, even if the long-term outlook on the fundamentals sounds really good, if the stock is going down and you've got a long position, you know, you've got to cut your loss. And so it all comes back to keeping a close eye on those charts and just sort of, I mean, because that really is the pulse of, uh, you know, what traders think. You know, if the stock is going down, you've got big selling volume. Well, you know, either you're short or you don't, probably don't want to be long. I mean, you just kind of have to focus on uh, the technicals in that way, I think. Uh, Ross, uh, your your site, while we're trading, is up for a uh, Benzinga FinTech Award for Best yeah. Educational Platform Tool or App. And uh, I, I hope we'll see you there again this year because you were there last year too, you correct? Will. Yeah, yeah, I was there last year. I'll be there again this year. Um, yeah, we're super excited about that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're super excited to have you back. If you uh, want to learn more about uh, either of Ross's sites, you can look them up on their site while you're trading. Uh, com. You can also vote for them, like I mentioned at the Benzinga FinTech Awards. They're up for Best Educational Platform Tool or App. You can just go to BenzingaFintechAwards.com and uh, click the Vote button and find that category and vote for it. Uh, for uh, where we're trading. So, Ross, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show for a few minutes today, and uh, I'll Thanks. talk to you again soon. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ross. All right, SP is going green again here, uh, 2327. Uh, on the upside, uh, the pre market high is 2750. I'm looking at 2329. Uh, that's Monday's high and the old time high. Right, Dennis, where did we pick up? Did we have uh, earnings? Did we do that? We did the T-Mobile. There really was a... Uh... We, we didn't do Gilead, or did we? No. We right. did talk about Gilead, no, yeah. And Gilead isn't earnings. It's just uh, more news. But here's another one where sentiment... We talked about yesterday on the show. The double bottom was put in place, and it was starting to show a little bit of life. We said that yesterday in the pre-market show. Obviously, no, we don't toot our own horn a lot, but we can toot our own horn on that one because we were right on. And here we are. We're looking at it. That's up three bucks, you know, two and a half bucks since we were just talking about it yesterday. So big, big move for it yesterday. Continue to move today. Good drug news here overnight. Spencer, give us the details. I mean, I'm not going to try to pronounce that drug. It's just positive data. <laughs> I, uh, I bet you, Brett. Like, I, 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 I want to highlight. I mean, just, just, just like look at the last week, though. I mean, they beat on earnings. You have uh, Martin Scully saying he'd buy Gilead. You have, you have rumors that Carl Icahn has a stake. Now you have positive drug data. So it's just like four good news items in a row. I just, Dennis, not so much that we made a great con this one. We just we we said if you're buying it. You know, you where's your out? And your low and your out was below that sixty five thirty eight. Yeah, you had a tradable bottom. Yeah, that was it. And cut it loose under there. And if you want to try again at sixty five and then stop yourself out at sixty four fifty, that's fine too. But uh, yeah, that one I I was watching. I never pulled the trigger on that one. That was uh, it gave you an out and oh. go out in time a little bit. You could have had a nice trade on. Yeah, I'm obviously still long at long term, but I didn't buy any short term, which I should have because on my sheet from yesterday, it says right at the top of it, Gilead Life with a question mark. So I should follow that too. But, you know, I was still questioning whether I had life or not, I guess, you know. So here it is. It's moving up. 70 bucks. That's going to be big psychological. That was the low. If this thing can, you know, continue to rally here, I think you're going to find all kinds of sellers when this thing touches in the 70s. So just because it's showing life here in the 60s doesn't mean there's a lot of overhead supply above. And I think there's all kinds of overhead supply here at 70. So I'm all of a sudden, if it gets up to 70, I'm going to turn bearish. All right. Uh, sticking with the biotech, uh, Tracy C. Tracy C., who was new to the chat yesterday, um, is asking uh, if – any more room to the upside, or is it over? It was up 15 bucks a share yesterday. Trading up uh, REGN, Regeneron. Oh, and, Regeneron. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm just, it's kind of a, like uh, not really, it's the second day of a two-day move. You had a big move, then one quiet day, and another one. To me, I'm just looking at that 380 level, 379.95. That was a high on January 11th. Nice psychological level. I mean, it could blow through there off the open, but I still really like it to hold 380 at least through the first bracket, and then things look you know pretty open to 385. So 380 is my bogey here in Regeneron, and you know what? I have to take a look at the IBB, but Dennis, your comments yep. on Regeneron? 
No, I just the just the biotechs all together. Let's go to the IBB because they're all kind of moving in sync here, and they're all looking itching to go. Like that IBB kind of looks like it wants to break out too here. So you know there is life here in the drugs. So you know where the you know there hasn't been life here for a long time. They are showing life across the board. Like just as I'm bringing up different charts, like look Eli Lilly, how quiet that's been, and it's you know a major pharmaceutical company, not a biotech, Ooh, but I'm kind that. of putting all the drugs together. You know Merck is the same thing. Merck has just been quietly consolidating here. Under $65. Why? Well, we've talked about the seller at $65. The seller is still there. Takes that seller out today, though, and Merck could be off to the races here, too. So just looking at Merck and looking at the open book, there's 400,000 shares at $65. That is enormous. But, you know, okay, so that's your bogey. It needs to take that out. That's the only way it's going to go higher is if it takes out that seller at 65 because That seller has been there. It's a real order. You know, in this market, you see a lot of fake orders out there. That one has been there for, we've been talking about it for a month. So it is real. You know, it's there every single day. Some institution taking off piece. Gets through that 400000 it's in breakout mode. So keep an eye on Merck, you know, and just let those are the major firms. Pfizer's been moving. But then you can even look at stocks like Abbott Labs broke out yesterday, ABT. It's come back a long ways from the lows. Even looking at Biogen there. Biogen's come all the way back from its low just five days ago when it got down to 260, 280. All these drugs have been showing some life. Celgene looks at you too, like in the biotech charts. Uh, Abbott got some love and barons over the weekend. I know we didn't uh, we didn't uh, cover it a whole lot, but uh, it did, and it got a nice bounce. So uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, I've been, uh, IBB, I know for sure, 300, that is like the big level. We've hit it. Yeah, we hit it back in uh, September, coming back up. So could also have some nice setups here. I uh, just want to cover a few things um, in the chat here. Casino stocks. Do we got some news moving the casino stocks here this morning? I did not get a chance to check. There is something. There is something out there because when is all when is trading up? Las Vegas Sands is trading up in MGM. Full disclosure, I've actually got a pair trade on them. Long MGM, short Las Vegas Sands. It's just overnight. It's nothing to do with the news here today. Do you have what the news here is today, Spencer? Uh, I'm looking, I think it's Macau data or something. It right? could be Macau data. I am looking right now, though. And I will okay, Spencer's when going I... high. I think there was something you know that came out here this morning. So you're seeing some life here in the casinos. But let's do the technicals here. WYNN. Starting to get above 100. That's a big bogey for it, too. Uh, just uh, in general here, when you get news on any kind of issue and you get a pre-market pop, you like to keep an eye on that pre-market high. That pre-market high is 10085. So continued movement for that, you really don't have much cover until you get up to 10250. That's where you had a gap on gap down day, and then between 10250 and 105, I'm sure some people are itching to get out as they got caught. Maybe that was an earnings move, or that might have been more Macau data, but just uh, probably some supply there. Las Vegas Sands. That ooh. wait, isn't Trump meeting with uh, with with them today? With or was that yesterday? Uh, he met with uh, the uh, Win. No, mm. does that ring a bell? Um, I'm not sure, but I wish I would have been able to take uh, Las Vegas Sands through 53.30 at a triple top there. So I wouldn't chase it up here, but if it came back to that old triple top, that could be support. And then what was the other one that was thrown into that fray there? It was no, it was uh, win in Las Vegas Sands. I think yeah, Trump met with yeah, him he, yesterday. He met, he met with Steve Wynn yesterday. I don't know if yes. that if that'll be your catalyst though. But I think uh, Gumby was saying China. So it sounds like Macau data. You know, usually when you see Wynn and you see Las Vegas Sands and Wynn pop more than MGM because they have more of a presence, usually it's Macau data. So that's just why I'm thinking that. But anyways. Other, a lot of other stocks here. So 8.30, I just want to give you a quick imbalance look, and then we'll come back here because we're getting the imbalances right now. Coca-Cola, 131000 The Sal KO continues to leak here a little bit since its last earnings report. Like I said, I think low 40s. I think you do find some buyers of value investors seem to always pop in when the stock gets back to 40. That's when the yield starts to get up near 4% as well. Well, 3.5% is where it's at right now. Bank of America, 170000 to sell. Citigroup, 48000 to buy. Those two banks going in opposite directions here. Twitter, which showed a little bit of life there yesterday. Okay, so it's similar setup here. We kind of got a double bottom here in Twitter. So similar setup like we were talking in Gilead yesterday. I see life here in Twitter. Now, you have a tradable bottom. Does that mean you know you can't take it out? No. It just means you know where your out is. So if you're saying you're coming here today, buying a 1586 this morning, 
well, if it takes another 1550 double bottom low, I wouldn't want to own it. So that's, you know, if I was trading it, I'm, you know, look, looking for a bounce here. Maybe if it can get above 16, maybe it starts to go into that, you know, gap area a little bit there, Joel. What are your thoughts on that? I like to set up here in Twitter. You got to, not only do you have a double t- uh, bottom, but you got a double top here. Uh, 1599, 16 even. Those are your two highs in the last two sessions. 1550 and 1551. Bulls and Bears squaring off here. One thing I also like here, leaning to the bullish side, you had the bad report that took it from 1872 to 1641. You traded 37 million shares one day on the day of earnings. You traded 109 million, I believe. Uh, got a lot of sellers out, a lot of people just puking out their positions. The next day, you still had some Johnny Come Lately sellers on the double downgrade, 73 million shares traded. Then yesterday, you dropped to 30 million. So maybe you get some sellers exhausted here, keeping an eye on 16 and Twitter. Okay, jumping over here just to a couple other stocks on my list Apple. Apple closed at an um, or closed. All-time closing high, I think, is what they were saying. Yep. It's not an all-time high, but an all-time closing high. I mean, we're within striking distance of the all-time high here now. And you know who's got egg on his face? And we were talking on the pre-pre-market show is Icon. Icon's been struggling here lately. And he sold his Apple. Remember, you were saying to me the bearish call down there um, on the overall market. Plus, he sold his Apple out at like $95, which is basically the low. And now you're looking at Apple, uh, $133. I'll pat myself on the back on this one. I still like Apple. still one of the biggest positions in my invest portfolio. I liked it all the way. I wish I would have bought even more down there. I bought some down there, but wish I would have bought even more. $133 bucks now. Apple here looks like it's going to eventually hit all-time highs. Uh, yeah, he was, what, 187% short down there? And actually, he sold his <laughs> Apple stake to Buffett. or Yeah, to Warren Buffett because he was buying it down there. Uh, the only thing New I, algorithm. Yep. Buffett <laughs> greater than Icon. He, he sold uh, in April of last year. And, uh, he sold yeah. in April of last year, which was right at the bottom. Uh, like and, That's right when the stock was like down in the low 90s. Yeah, it was. No, he I, couldn't have sold it worse, really. And... Um, also, what else did I want to add on that? Uh, we were talking about um, IEP, too. I mean, Icon Enterprises. Uh, what do you have on the book value on that now? Last time I looked at the book value of Icon, uh, Icon Enterprise was around 35 bucks. And the way he's been trading here, I don't think it's been going up. Maybe it's up a little bit there. But here is a stock. It still trades at $56. I mean, who pays these kind of premiums? Like, that's the one thing. you got to understand, you know, what you know, you're buying. So it's, you know, when you're buying a Berkshire Hathaway, you're buying an Icon Enterprise, you're buying a portfolio of stocks. So what is that portfolio worth? That's the first thing. It's called net asset value. What is it worth? Go and look up the net asset value and see how much it's trading for a premium. Because when the stock and net asset value is 35 bucks and you're paying 56 bucks, they're paying a lot of premium there over what the core holdings have. And think about how old Icon is. You know, not saying, you know, but when you're in your 80s, how many years are you going to get with Icon managing this thing? So, you know, long, long term talking. And, you know, he hasn't been doing that well lately with his picks. So I don't know if I would be paying, you know, in a 70 or 80 percent premium for Icon Enterprises over the, the net asset values. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it's been coming up here. But the last time I checked, it was around 35 or 36 bucks. And 56, that's way too much premium for me to pay. All right. Uh, we got a minute before we bring uh, Nick Shaheen on of Create Income with Option Spreads. And uh, Downward Dog quietly throws some uh, stocks in there. G I M O, uh, boy, you got a wall forming in there, downward dog. I mean, bona fide breakout. I wouldn't worry about that high over 34. I'm just looking at the. Let's go to that's a monthly, but let's go to a daily. I like these kind of formations. You know, four or five highs in the same area, so you pop up up 30. 340 and uh looks like you got some room on the upside maybe to at least 35 then you got a big gap to fill uh dennis any comments on gmo no no comments on this i don't know anything about this company okay and uh one more cy it's 835 let's grab nick on the fly or oh, are we gonna have to take a break and get nick okay all right three two one break whether you're a short-term swing trader or a long-term investor, you need to check out Thinkorswim, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. There's a reason why Thinkorswim has been named the number one trading platform, because it has it all. With Thinkorswim, you can trade stocks, options, 
futures, forex, and virtually every other type of order. Get notifications on mobile devices and interact with other traders in chat rooms. You can also use technical indicators and see the latest investing and trading education in Think Money magazine. If you want to keep up with the markets, you need Thinkorswim. To experience everything Thinkorswim has to offer, open a TD Ameritrade account today. Thinkorswim, the online trading platform for traders and investors. TD Ameritrade, member SIPC. All investing involves risks. Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Benzinga Pro. I'm your co-host, Joel L. Kahn, along with Dennis Dick, also Spencer Israel, working the boards, and we're joined by Nick Shaheen. He is the author of Create Income with Options Spread. Nick, how you doing on this Tuesday morning? Doing great. How about you guys? I kind of lost audio earlier today. I was listening to you, and then my computer didn't want to run your app anymore. Oh, I'm sure it was your computer. I'm sure it was. <laughs> First of all, Nick, you have been, and I can attest to this, you have been saying, if if you want to get short, don't do it. Just stay out. Let this market cool down a little bit. Uh, just comment on that. I mentioned, you know, four days of new all-time highs, new all-time closing highs. I mean, how do you find a target? How do you find any kind of resistance in this market? Well, it, it's harder to short the market than to short uh, specific stories. Uh, the reason why the markets are levitating right now and the easier path is up. The default path is up. If nothing happens, we're going to trickle up um, because whatever we're promised, we cannot deny for another two months or so. I mean, who's going to say, OK, your plans are not working now. Uh, they need to see some spending or some not spending or him sh getting Trump getting shut down on this plan. So we cannot um, write off the promises now. So it's not like, OK, they're going to raise rates next month and that could be a, a target. In this case, it's a. It's a, prom a set of promises that cannot be refuted right now. So it, it's going to it's going to take a negative new negative headline in order to drop us. So something we haven't been expecting, and that could happen at any time in any day. And it's not a reason to short. Uh, seems, that's, uh, just on the negative headlines here, though, it seems like we've had some negative headlines here, and the market just seems to shrug it off. I mean, a sell off now seems to be two percent. Like it's we have, we it's haven't ridiculous. had a. We haven't had a new negative headline. We've had rehashes of old ones, and the new ones have been somewhat mild. So, like you guys mentioned this morning, something uh, about uh, some guy not being um, accepted in the White House, and it's going to cause turmoil. But it's not. The White House yeah. turmoil headline has been here before he got elected. So it's not a new headline. I mean, we knew uh, the Trump uh, uh, White House is going to be controversial at, you know, since he started running so it's not a new headline something new like you know uh, some wheel falling off somewhere else in the world or finding out something new or somebody challenging the trump presidency or something like that something that we have not seen yet um, that could probably cause a tizzy in a little bit and even then we don't know if it's going to be sustained and we had a couple that we thought were going to be tizzies and they weren't they were like for 20 minutes and then boom off to new highs so instead of fighting the 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 market in general find the the levels of entry and exits. You guys were talking about uh, you know rumors and and stuff like that. I I agree for the most part. Uh, I think it was uh, UTX or Honeywell or somebody, one of those two giants getting together. And I was coming on your show and I said I I bought puts immediately after like a 11 percent pop on a merger of sorts and. So that works too. So f find the stories like that rather than trying to short the market in general. Jumping over here just to um, well, let's let's look let's look at the biotechs here because we were just talking about them and I was starting to look at some of these charts and they were starting to look interesting to me here and I want to get Nick Shaheen's thoughts here just on the biotechs in general. Let's go to the IBB because I know you got those charts in your back pocket. Uh, actually, I was going to do a write up on that and ah. you beat me you beat me to it. So <laughs> I. I I send out a morning note, uh, obviously, every morning, and in it I put things that are staples in there, and one of which is this, uh, the biotech. I'm saying, you know, they've been beaten down and uh, held down 
by headlines or the the threat of headlines. So I said, but technically they're starting to look frisky and fundamentally they actually make money. Uh, some of them have streams of income that are not being recognized for value purposes the way they would in, under normal circumstances because uh, of the threat of the Trump tweet or whatever. But like I said, these are headlines that we've seen before. So what? He's going to say we're going to push down more on prices. But he said that like three or four times and every time it's had had an effect on it. But at some point it will stop having an effect um, until we see action. So in this case, technically frisky on the IBV, for example, I could play it the IBV or I can play it in individual names um, and f try to find... I I don't know enough about them, so I would probably rather play the whole sector. Or if you see something specific in a name you know, then maybe that's the way to go with that. So technically, I like them. Uh, fundamentally, I kind of like the idea of them. So uh, pick pick and choose. Twilio, we're getting this from Downward Dog in the chat. T-W-L-O. What are your thoughts on this one? Okay, somebody brought it to my attention yesterday, um, and technically also frisky, uh, meaning that it has had higher... Uh, lows knocking on an area that uh, somewhat seems pivotal. So if they can break through it, I don't know what they're doing this morning with Twilio. Was it reporting? Wasn't it reporting? No, they reported uh, a week or so ago. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah, there was a big story okay. on this one, Nick. Uh, there was a, a lockup period. And uh, okay. a lot of people thought that they were just going to rush in and sell this stock um, off the lockup. And uh, I'm not sure how many shares came to market. Uh, and uh, this thing has had a nice rally. It's been a favorite of Nick Shaheen's. Looks like this $35 level is uh, looking pretty interesting. It is. And if, if it does burst through 35, I'd look at 37.50 ish. You know, ideally they want to see 40, but I don't know. That might be a little far, but technically it's. Behaving well, you know, higher lows knocking on a roof area that's been contentious. So let's see what they do with that. Um, I don't know enough about the company, but I'm just talking from price action wise. Down, uh, just jumping over here. Spinner wants to know about Sarepta, S R P T. This is one that I have reluctantly not sold in my investment portfolio there. And I've been Ooh. complaining about it on the show for the last week because I got the big pop up there and I sold half the position. I started sold it all. Anyways, give me a thought here because this one's a techni this one's technically interesting as well. Yeah, well, it has two scenarios technically. I don't know what's going on. I mean, yesterday's scandal was pretty interesting. So uh, scary when you have lower highs knocking on the floorboard, which is the opposite of the other situation. So if it does have good fundamentals, maybe somebody will step in and buy it. Um, but you know, be cautious. Um, if, if I were to want, if I wanted to go long it, I wouldn't risk any more than a little bit on the call spreads, and I would do it out in time. You know, Joel and I have had this conversation a whole bunch of times. If I'm going to buy a debit call spread to go long or a debit put spread to go short, anything, and why wouldn't I step out in time if, if I'm doing it near the money? It costs the same for doing it one that expires next week or a month or two from now. The spreads are they will cost half the 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 width of the spread near the money. So if I believe that this one's going to bounce, I would do it for March uh, contract or longer. Uh, this way, I, I would give myself time to be right. This way, if it had two days of more, uh, you know, a little bit of red uh, dripping, I wouldn't be panicking out of my position because it expires next week and I see my premiums getting deflated severely. So that's how I would do it. There were a couple of tickers I was looking at. Um, you know, I know you guys have some tickers to share, but I was looking. I had a note to myself, Nike, uh, you know, sh sh short at some point in time. And I, I had a note to myself. So I'm going to share it with you to see if it is that time to short Nike, for example. Um, I, you said that you were shorting. Uh, you were tempted to short the indices at these level. Well, here's one that hit my target and then some. So here they will uh, decide whether they want to get it back to the 58 area. So is this the time where it recovers some decency there or it reverse a little bit lower and breathe this? So instead of shorting the indices, pick ideas or go long ideas. Uh, like I had a note to look at Ford. You guys talked about GM this morning and Ford is getting some action off of GM. Uh, it was already technically interesting to me. Uh, so I look at Ford and see how um, close it is to being more interesting at this point in time. Um, is it going to be uh, breaking out of this lower high trend ish uh, behavior? So, if so, maybe it tries to reach for 13 or more. So, yeah, the markets are pretty puzzling, but there are a whole bunch of stories within it that work. And the assumption, the fact that the markets in general are not going to crash without a new headline, gives you a floorboard with which you can work. 
All right, Nick. So uh, I got a little confession to make here, traders. Uh, Nick's been helping me out, and I've actually been putting on some option spreads. Right, Nick? I'm going out. I'm going out in time, and I'm good. And I'm not. I'm not going into the. I'm not trying to get these. Uh, you know, big risk reward ratios. It's very hard. But Nick has been uh, taking some baby steps. Been very patient with me, and we're talking about Nvidia here. And uh, let's put the chart here. Uh, this stock, I I got in some trouble in uh, at the end of last year. Uh, Andrew left, bailed me out here. But I just look at this thing, and after a great earnings report, it's dropping. So instead of just trying to buy the weekly puts, which probably would have been working today, I see it down to buck eight. I put on the old 10 March, going all the way out to March, March 107, 105 put spread. And I put it on it, uh, you know, quite a bit under a buck. I can't remember, 70, 75 cents or something. Now, the thing that I like about this is I know exactly where I can get out because I know that spread will never be worth more than $2. So, Nick, do I, will they even buy that thing from me at 190 195 if it gets down near that area? Or do I have to go 180 185 I mean, you can get in, but how the heck do you get out of these things? I mean, if you're trading the big tickers or always liquid, there's always a buyer. I mean, I've sold some stuff that is so way out of the money or bought some stuff that is so way out of the money. Uh, it, it depends on the ticker. And I wouldn't be worried about this one. I mean, I've traded it. I've never had an issue filling anything. And you're trading it the way I would. So the idea here is, uh, again, instead of, like you said, swinging for the fences at every at bat, well, what's wrong with a couple of doubles or base hits? I mean, that's how a whole bunch of base hits make for a very healthy portfolio. I can I can attest to that. So um, I, I like the idea of giving myself time. But I, I would love a home run. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be swinging for it every time. But if I can take one or two... And I have tried a few, some work, and you only need a few to work to offset a whole bunch of losses. But emotionally, you'll be devastated <laughs> because you're losing all these little things. You think you're going to be home runs, and then you wake up and it's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they bought it back up. So I did short NVIDIA you know, at that previous dump, and I got out, and not at maximum uh, profits. So, you know, pick your exit points too. It doesn't mean that you have to wait until it gets fully priced in. Usually if I get a pick, big pop really fast, like 20 or 30%, I, I leave money on the table. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, and uh, just uh, taking a look, um, I know you're good at keep a close eye here on the crude oil market. Are you trading the range on this thing, or are you finally waiting for a breakout? I mean, have you ever seen crude run into a resistance level like here, just on, just above 54? How are you looking at the crude market via the USO? Uh, to answer your question, yes, I have seen uh, resistance like this. And for, for, for the crude, it's very easy for me. Um, it is stuck between 50 and 55. The, the 55 is the new 50. And uh, OPEC is going to support the 50 for now, but they're not going to run it up to its potential. This potential that I thought from months ago was 58 to 60, uh, just pure on technical basis. And then when they had the OPEC deal, I thought, okay, this is the time they're going to push for it. But I think at 60, uh, they will have, I mean, you saw how many re the rig counts have been, you know, growing and rig counts or they, they tap them for future use. So that puts pressure on out prices because there is going to be pumping down the line, the higher rig counts. They don't pump now, but they pump down the line the way I understand it. So um, that puts pressure on future prices. So they will need something to, to break out of this 55. So, so recently they're having higher lows busting on that 54, 55 level. So let's see if this time they can jump out of it. Until then, I mean, if, if I were trading this, I'd probably be selling USO iron condors for weeks on end. Nick, let's go to your fang trade. What do you think? And give me your, I, li I love your fang chart if you have it. There. Uh, uh, okay, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. Facebook, Amazon. Yeah, we're not talking FAMG. Uh, we're talking uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. And we could call it Fanga if you want, if you want to add Apple in there too. But give us your thoughts here on all the big market guns there. We've got Facebook within striking distance of all time highs, Amazon within striking distance, Netflix just slightly off just from yesterday there. And then you have Google, which is a little further off from all time highs, but still near the tops here. Give us your thoughts. Um, you know, the mega caps, you can't argue against them because they actually ha are not expensive except for, you know, a few of them, uh, but justifiably so. 
but Apple, even at this all-time high, is it crazy expensive? It's not. I mean, look at the PEs and stuff like that. Um, it is expensive relative to its historic. Uh, you know, people don't like to give it a premium. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe maybe Tim Cook will prove me wrong. I think he will break Apple eventually. But maybe he can prove me wrong and come out with something. Somebody was talking about a foldable phone. Wait a minute. I think it was called Motorola, like in the olden days, Razors. I don't know. So that seems to be innovation again. So maybe paper thin foldable phone, okay. But until then, you know, these mega caps are easy longs in a such a bullish market. And if they do fall, then you got something to work with. I mean, there is a floor in Apple, there is a floor in Google, there is a floor in Amazon, believe it or not. So there, you can see floors. So I would much rather go long these mega caps than something that's too frothy. Some of them are frothy perception, like Amazon. But I tell you what, I put a note out there when Amazon got fell to 805 or whatever after the uh, earnings. I said, if it gets to 843, 900 plus should come. Uh, so what was the high yesterday? 843. And by the way, we're long Amazon uh, because of the hammer after the earnings. They had a terrible report. Uh, they broke all the cardinal rules of a growth company, but nobody seems to focus on that. And I said, well, if they had all the reasons to sell it and they couldn't uh, to break the 800 on the downside, it's so long. So we went long it and it was fruitful so far. Yeah, a psychological level, too. You talk about uh, 800, 803, 804 was a double bottom there. So a lot of people were holding out for 800. Nick, before you let you go, uh, Rob Hood is asking about ITT. Tough chart here on this one. I'm not sure what to tell him. I mean, I do see room up here to the high of the move, 43.22. 43, that was some highs back in uh, uh, mid-November, too. That looks like the big level. I guess I should check pre-market trading before I uh, step out too (laughs) far. Don't pull a neck. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But uh, 43 looks like the level on that one. Any thoughts on ITT before we let you go? Hey, Rob, I don't know the company itself, but technically I could argue that it's kind of behaving like it wants to break out. Obviously, it had a good candle uh, here. So where where is the chat room? There it is. Um, it you know It's got promise at the line I just drew. It's not a hard line in the sand because it obviously had a couple of pokes, but maybe they want to retest the highs. And if they do, they could go above it to 44 plus. But that's just on the technical. It, it's, it's a pretty violent chart, and I don't know what the, what the company is. All right, staying away if you don't know the fundamentals. Nick Shaheen, but, author of but, Create Income with Apps. You got one more thing, Nick? I, I do, I do. Email me at sellspreads at gmail.com, and I may open up a special chat room for a day or two for you guys. Not when the show is on, and uh, we'll have fun in there, and we'll learn a, a thing or two. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot, Nick. We'll talk to you again soon. Later. All right, uh, let's get back here. S&Ps are bouncing around pretty good here, Dennis. Uh, back down near, uh, down a buck. Uh, any changes in imbalances? Uh, they've grown and they're mixed. So it's one of those days, and you see this a lot of times when the S&P futures are up, down, and kind of all over the place. You do see them mixed. And I'm just looking here this one on Twitter, like we were saying, showing a little bit of strength, 53,000 shares to buy. Coke is still 158,000 to sell. Citigroup 74,000 to buy. Morgan Stanley 72,000 to buy. Financials, a lot of them made new highs yesterday. So just quietly looking, you know, JP Morgan broke out, made a new high. Morgan Stanley broke out, made a new high. Goldman Sachs was right there within striking distance of making a new high. So the financials were starting to show some life there yesterday. Uh, some pharmaceutical companies, Merck 67,000 to sell. We talked about the big seller up there. Pfizer 95,000 to sell. I, they, they've been strong sectors as of late. So, you know, maybe on a pullback there, maybe there's an opportunity. Community. Um, G- General Electric, two hundred ninety-nine thousand to buy. That's been a trend there too. Just as long, it was like sell imbalances in GE. It seemed like for months, and now in the last few weeks, it's been buy imbalances every day. So, not sure what's happening with GE, but all of a sudden, starting to show some life. Yeah. Uh, well, you found support. I mean, it didn't give you that perfect uh, quad bottom or triple bottom. It gave you uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lows right at that twenty-nine fifty area. Then you flushed out all the people that were leaning on it, and now maybe you cleared out the sellers here at 30, trading at 30.09. Spencer, you got something for us? Well, I was going to say that the move is over now, but uh, NAK, Northern Dynasty uh, Minerals, was the subject of the latest short report from Carousel Capital. They see it going to zero. That was about, that came out about 15 minutes ago. 
Alright, uh, well, the thing hit some resistance at 340. I mean, we talk about shorting these lower price stocks, and they hit it down to 295. So if you're looking for continued follow through, need to take out that pre market low just under 295. Looks like 294. Set up for today. This is a tricky day. We are seeing a little bit of strength, but I always try to determine whether it's risk on or risk off. When the S&P futures are trading flat, that is hard to determine that. I'm seeing a few sell balances, like we said, in a few stocks, a few buy balances in other stocks. It is so mixed here, though. It kind of feels like it wants to be a little bit of a risk off day. But we know what happens when it's risk off in the morning, then it's risk on by the afternoon. It seems like this market is just relentless to the upside. So it has been a tough, tough trade to remain short this market. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to fight that battle. Uh, any notable imbalances today? Or not imbalances. I'm sorry. Ratings changes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got a, a couple good ones, actually. So, Under, Spencer, give us the details. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a couple interesting ones. Under Armour caught an upgrade this morning from Morgan Stanley to uh, to equal weight. Uh, they see a price target of $20. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw Zillow caught an upgrade. Uh, NetApp caught an upgrade from Piper Jaffray. Those are the three that, that stuck out to me. All right. Zillow's hot right now, like it's up over a dollar in the pre-market. So, and you got the two stocks, and go ZG, or you can go Z. So, pick your poison there. Z is trading up. Um, notice I said Z, not Z for you guys, but in Canada we say Z. <laughs> I don't know if anybody know what I'm talking about. Uh, Z's trading up 3.58 percent, and ZG, so I did both for you, is trading up 1.85 percent. Uh, uh, Zillow Z, I'm looking at here, just in the no man's land. Uh, just had it printed 3645. A couple thousand shares traded here. Filling a gap. Uh, to me, the number I'd be keeping an eye on is the low from fe 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 February 7th at 3674. That would fill the huge gap. I don't know if that was from earnings or not. Um, after that, 38, that was the high. So, gapping in to a gap area. And uh, what was uh, that app? Did it, what was that? Did that catch an upgrade? Yeah, it's upgraded here today. Uh, who was it that upgraded that app? Spent Piper? I think Piper. Yes, it was Piper. Okay, not a lot trading here. I see. Less. Forty looks big. Oh I yeah. I don't know. I, I, you got your Nasdaq stock, so I can't see. You know, the, uh, there's no New York book or anything like that. There will be eventually, which is going to be awesome at the end of the year when New York start, starts trading. The New York um, primary exchange starts trading Nasdaq stocks, but. As of right now, I can't see a buck. So 40.06 is where the last trade here, but I'd imagine there might be something at 40. Yeah, I mean, you need to, if you've been waiting to get out at 40, you've been waiting since uh, February of 2015 when the stock peaked at 39.90. Uh, now you're back above 40 here. We'll see if it can hold a breakout off the open. Uh, only trading out 40 some cents here in the pre market trading. All right, eight fifty eight. Spencer, you want to uh, wrap up today's show and let us know what's on the docket for tomorrow. Uh sure. Tomorrow we're gonna have uh two interviews for you. First we'll, our first guest will be uh Sean Emery at eight uh thirty five and Sean hasn't been on the show actually for a few months. He is the founder and CIO of Avery and Company and the author of uh the market meter dot com and also uh, at 9 tomorrow, we're going to play a recorded interview that we did a couple weeks back with Callum Thomas. He is the head of research at Top Down Charts. Uh, we talked to him. He's out in, uh, it was I believe it was New Zealand or it may have been Australia. I'm not going to lie. I can't remember. That was a few weeks ago. But we're going to have, so that's a recorded interview that we're going to play at 9 uh, for you tomorrow. So we're going to have Sean Emery and Callum Thomas on there. If you missed any part of uh, our show today, you can catch the whole thing on YouTube or our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Just search for uh, Benzinga or Premarket on any of those platforms. Also, want to remind you about Benzinga Pro. It's uh, Benzinga's real-time news platform. It's great for anybody who wants to stay on top of what's going on in the markets. I use it during the show. So does uh, Joel. So does Dennis. Uh, you can get a free two-week trial by going to pro.benzinga.com. Also, Tickets for the Benzinga Fintech Awards just went on sale a few weeks ago, or may, may have been last week, actually. If you are in New York or you want to uh, network with some people uh, in fintech, this year we're going to have Kevin O'Leary there from Shark Tank, a lot of other people, Seth Naren, who we had, who we had on the show a few weeks ago, he might be there. Uh, so that's at BenzingaFintechAwards.com. Tickets are on sale now. That's our show for the day. Please remember that all the information, material, and content is for informational purposes, purposes only and not meant to be investing advice. 
Have a good rest of your day, everybody. We'll be back with you folks tomorrow. Whether you're a short-term swing trader or a long-term investor, you need to check out Thinkorswim, brought to you by TD Ameritrade. There's a reason why Thinkorswim has been named the number one trading platform, because it has it all. With Thinkorswim, you can trade stocks, options, futures, forex, and virtually every other type of order. Get notifications on mobile devices and interact with other traders in chat rooms. You can also use technical indicators and see the latest investing and trading education in Think Money magazine. If you want to keep up with the markets, you need Thinkorswim. To experience everything Thinkorswim has to offer, open a TD Ameritrade account today. Thinkorswim, the online trading platform for traders and investors. TD Ameritrade, member SIPC. All investing involves risks.